Alan, uh, some people would say that because our mind is our brain and our neurons cranking out uh, 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 electrical spikes and chemicals flowing back and forth, that all this is a mechanical process. And therefore, essentially, there's no free will because everything that has happened uh, causes everything that will happen in a very molecular way. And everything I'm saying, everything that you're saying is because of what we did in the past and our mothers or whatever else, the history of the world. And we're all sort of acting out of a pre-written play. So as a scientist, it's easy for me to understand how you could be totally predetermined. But I got to tell you, as a human being, it's very tough for me to imagine how I'm totally predetermined. But is that an illusion? Is your, is your feeling an illusion? I have no idea. I genuinely don't know, and I don't know how you ask the question of whether or not everything is sequentially predetermined. Post hoc analysis doesn't do it for right, me, right? right? I, I would agree. have to have a prospective kind of a study done I that mean, shows that under A and B and C and D conditions, you will guaranteed get this out of that person every time. I, mean, I can decide whether to tap this side of the chair or this side of the chair. And I feel I'm in, I'm in charge of that process. That I, I, whatever this I is, can make that decision. Maybe. But, Maybe. But what is the I, if you, as neuroscientists, and I've had some experience in that area a long time ago, um, we see that, in, that the mind is in the brain and there's a uh, hundred billion or so neurons in the cerebral cortex and we can see the connections between them in very large numbers, but each one does everything that makes me tap one side or another. So, so wh where is that free will or that decision making coming from if it's not the product of a whole series of mechanical acts? So this is what I call the transduction process. It's as you understand things, more and more at a, a more simple level, a, a reductionist level, you know, what people right. call reductionism. Right. 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 A task for science is going to be up -uctionism. It's going to be to move back from that molecular level, back up through the system level, up to the mind. And we're just now at a stage of moving down. And we're doing a great job, by the way, of moving down. And now it's time for us to begin to move yeah. to higher levels of integration. Because otherwise, you're never going to know the answer to that, that question. But that sounds artificial. It sounds like as you go to a higher level, but you're not adding something miraculous as you go up to those levels, are you? It's just a product of what's below. It may be a product, but what it means to be a product may be different. That is that a part of it has to be an integrator process. Because if I put two neurons together, and I make it go beep, I don't get a memory out of it. But that may be all there is to memory. So you need to have a way to get the information back out. Totally agree with that, but still we're in a mechanical process. So even if we go up and when, I mean, we put hydrogen and oxygen together and you analyze the hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, I mean, you know, I, I couldn't predict the properties of water. I mean, that's a simple, Example, but we know at some level there's nothing miraculous in that process that hydrogen, oxygen, because of the electron shell and whatever is going is to create this property of water. So as you go up the scale, there are certainly things like that that occur that make each level more interesting and more unique. But still, you have a mechanical process. So at the end of the day, my will is artificial. And everything is predetermined. No? No. The fact that we don't understand what the process is doesn't mean it doesn't consist of all of its parts. It consists of all of its parts. But the net effect experienced by everybody is of a different kind of a phenomenon. The fact that you don't understand that phenomenon doesn't mean that the most simplistic explanation is all there is. But how does that phenomenon, whatever it is, affect the, the mechanism of what we're doing? I mean, my tapping is, is related to neurons in my, in my motor cortex, sending signals to, 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 to nerves that move muscles. I mean, this is Come a Come back in 100 years, and I'll give you the answer to the question. Years. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs>